Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Now, last week I showed you some frequency response measurements in empty rooms to give you an idea of what's actually normal when you're just setting up, when you're just starting out, and what it is you're actually looking at. But the question is obviously, what happens with treatment? What changes in the frequency response? And what does a good frequency response in a treated room actually look like? That's what I wanna show you today. So let's start with the first measurement that I actually showed you last week. This is again, the same measurement taken in the empty room for now. And we're just looking at the right speaker. Again, as before, this was measured at the listening position. The whole graph is smoothed by 124th octave. And overall, as before, we have a region of standing waves where, where room modes or standing waves dominate the low end. Then we have a sort of transitional area where reflections start creeping in and the comforters that they cause. And then we move over to basically only reflection induced comb filters at the, in the mids and the high end. So we then treated this room with around 20 panels. Some of them used as base traps in the corners, but a lot of them as just for reflection control. And here's what the measurement looks like afterwards. So again, at the same exact position, but with about 20 panels in the room. And the room isn't entirely treated at all yet. There was still plenty of opportunity for more base trapping, but this is kind of a, a midway result that you can expect, right? With again, about 20 panels. And the first impression really is that doesn't really look any better at all. And that's sort of true, but let's, let's break it down. Let's look at this in, in more detail. So again, starting at the low end, that lowest peak didn't really change much. But then we have quite a bit of variation in the untreated room that is now quite smoothed out, quite evened out. And there's this huge peak that really kind of disappeared. From then on out, we see we actually have more waviness overall in the response. And we get these fairly severe comb filters in the top end. Let me just switch off the untreated response so we can clearly, more clearly see what's going on here. And this is actually the result of the desk, which wasn't in the measurement before, right? So this just shows you just how strong the impact of the desk is. But more than that, I wanna show you that the frequency response doesn't really improve nearly as much as you would expect. Or in other words, it takes a lot more treatment to get to any sort of response that resembles flat. In fact, to really get a, a pristine flat response, you need to measure the room treated, but basically void of any furniture whatsoever. It's just the speakers and the microphone. And that's the only sort of scenario where you can create a somewhat flat frequency response, right? So that's kind of the main thing to realize here. There's so much stuff still going on in the room that especially in the mids and high end, you can forget about flat. It's just not gonna happen. And even in the low end, the standing wave problem Im improves, but it doesn't just disappear unless you really do a, a substantial amount of treatment. Now, the more interesting thing here is if I switch back to this psychoacoustic smoothing, remember, if we wanna figure out what we actually hear, we need to play connect the dots across the frequency response because we hear where energy is at certain frequencies and we, we don't hear where there's no energy. So we play connect the dots to get a line that more closely resembles what we're actually hearing. And if I do this here, we can see that ignoring that part about the desk reflection, the overall balance doesn't really change all that much. Right, and that's kind of the thing to, to really take away here. You need to create a, an overall balanced response from the start because it, it only improves with treatment. It doesn't, it doesn't change, it doesn't, the treatment doesn't fix any problems. It just improves what is already there. So let's move to the next example. Again, this is the same, second, the same second example I showed you last time. We had that massive 
dip at around 85 hertz. Again, this is in the untreated room. And now watch what happens when I we when we treated the room. Again, this was a similar, a smaller room, but similar amount of panels, around 20 panels. And here's what that did. So again, as we can see, things improve, but they don't just magically flatten out. We did get quite a bit of an improvement in terms of that dip. So this was obviously to some extent a standing wave problem that we, we managed to get some control over. It potentially was a speaker boundary interference related problem that we also got some control over. And going further up in frequency, that huge peak actually somehow turned into a dip. <laughs> and this is not actually uncommon. What's going on here is that, as I mentioned before, the frequency response shows us all the different types of problems all sitting on top of each other and sort of mashed together into this one graph. And as we start removing some of those problems, those that are left over start popping up. And so what originally might have been dominated by a strong resonance peak, a strong standing wave peak, by removing that resonance, that standing wave, we might now be left with a certain comb filter dip that we still haven't treated, right? So that's how this sort of thing happens. But then again, overall, it's still as squiggly and we're still getting the same overall waviness in the response, right? So just to sh show you again, we need to find a balanced response to build on top of with the treatment. It's that not that we can fix the response after the fact. Let's go to the third example. So this is, again, the in this case, the left speaker in this third example that I showed you last week. So this is the speaker closest to the wall. Remember, this setup was asymmetrically set up in the room. It was kind of shifted to the left. And the left speaker was actually closer to the left wall than the right speaker was to the right wall. And that's how we got this bass boost here in the low end. Same basic procedure. We treated the room with probably around 25, maybe 30 panels in total. And here's what happened. The improvement is sort of marginal, right? We've even got that same desk reflection induced comb filter happening again. We've got a dip that was transformed into a peak this time. So the other way around. And overall, the balance really hasn't changed that much. So I think you're starting to get the picture of here what's going on. When we're setting up our speakers, when we're setting up finding our listening position, we are determining what type of frequency response, what type of overall balance we're going to get, because that's dictated by the room's shape and size and geometry. And then we can only improve on that with the treatment. So then of course you might be wondering, well, why then do this at all? Well, the thing is, treatment doesn't really show its strength as much in the frequency response as you would expect. It shows its strength in the time response because absorbers are there primarily to absorb sound as it bounces around the room. And so what you, where you can really see the change is when we look at something like a waterfall graph as a quick example and then compare the before and after. So what we just saw was the measurement in the empty room. And here it is with those 20 panels in place in case of that first room, right? Once again, without going into any, any crazy detail, this is what it looked like before. And then with the 20 panels in place, we can see just how substantially the decay, the time decay of the room has changed. And that's what's gonna give us the, the real benefit while we're mixing, while we're trying to figure out details in, in reverbs and delays and spaces, but also just hearing what's going on, right? And it's, it's, the, it's the, the change in the decay time that inherently then improves the frequency response. We're not directly attempting to fix anything in the frequency response. We're attempting to fix the decay of the room and that automatically improves the frequency response. The two things I want you to take away here are, first of all, that the frequency response doesn't magically get flat with a bit of treatment. In fact, it takes a whole lot of treatment to even remotely get to anywhere 
that resembles a flat frequency response. And as soon as you start putting furniture in your room, like a desk and maybe a couch, maybe a table in front, maybe some shelves, you will get reflections that once again mess up that flat response that you originally had. That's just the reality of it. And the second thing is that because that's the case, we need to make sure that we start off with a response that is as overall as balanced as possible because we can only build on that with the treatment. We're not going to magically fix mistakes. We're going to start with the best response possible and then just take it further from there with treatment. And that's why it's so important that you make sure that your listening position and your speakers are set up properly in your empty room. That's what you want to focus on first because it's going to give you the biggest advantage in terms of starting off with that balanced response. And of course, the very first step in that process is determining where your listening position needs to be in your room. Because the low end that you get at your listening position is purely determined by the overall shape and size of your room and what kind of pattern of standing waves that creates in your particular situation. So you need to figure out where in your room you, that spot is where those standing waves all sort of balance out. That's the spot where you need to set up your listening position and then build on top of that, set up your speakers relative to that spot. I call that spot the, the low end sweet spot of your room. And there are obviously many ways you can find that, including using complicated and time consuming measurements. But I in fact think it's much easier to do that using a structured listening test. So I call it the base hunter technique and it's a simple procedure that's going to take you maybe half an hour or an hour that you can use in any room, no matter what shape or size, even the really odd shaped rooms to find where that low end sweet spot actually is. And you can download the guide for it for free at the link in the description. So I highly recommend if you're still fighting an unbalanced frequency response, an unbalanced low end at your listening position and you need to somehow get it fixed that you go through this process to figure out where the low end sweet spot in your room actually is so you get to move your listening position into that spot and actually get a naturally balanced low end in your room. All right, as always, I hope that was helpful and helped you understand a bit more about what actually happens when you start treating your room and what kind of results you can expect. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.